Good morning, and welcome to CAM Look, your bi-weekly dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. When each Tuesday and Thursday, a member of the CAM family shares a work from our permanent collection and poses a few questions for discussion. We hope you'll check back at 10 a.m. for a new work and a new conversation. Hi, my name's Emily. I'm the Director of Learning and Interpretation at the museum. And today, I get to share a really fun story that a local writer named Eva Feld shared with us that was inspired by this work of art by our Shield Gorky called Virginia Landscape. Eva is a member of a really creative group called the Monday Morning Writers Club that meets every Monday morning at Joseph Beth. I hope you enjoy your story. I surely did. The Inner Eye by Eva Feld. Quote, philosophers and sociologists haven't reached the answer to the meaning of identity, nor have scientists or psychoanalysts found a satisfactory response to the value of belonging. It seems that only artists and writers can depict the true multiplicity of colors, personalities, sounds, and shadows of mankind." End quote. Mr. Maximo's affirmations were loaded with a heavy accent which he tried to contrast with enthusiasm, but the more fervor he would show in defense of his ideas, the more his students yawned. The history professor longed for debates like the ones he enjoyed with his peers in his native Armenia back in time. All these answers can only be found in books and art and music and creation, insisted Mr. Maximo, but his audience was far away in a world of video games, entertainment, and flirting. He seriously considered quitting, but decided to give the kids and himself another chance. It took him two weeks of arguments to convince the principal of the school to allow him to take his pupils to the museum. On the bus, he had an involuntary and mild success by overstating some dramatic events. He mentioned Vincent van Gogh cutting his ear to illustrate the boundless pain of an artist on the quest for, to find originality. Some artists and poets reinvent themselves by adopting nicknames, stated Mr. Maximo, and invited his students to do the same. What happens if some of us use the same nickname? Like if 10 of us want to be called Batman or all of us want all of the girls to choose Barbie, asked one of the boys trying to embarrass his professor and at the same time bully the few girls on the bus. Mr. Maximo felt like scoring a goal and kicked the question back to his students by asking each one of them to come up with their own nickname. Most of the students were amused for a while by naming themselves as superheroes. A few chose controversial names such as Che Guevara or Mandela. Some of them agreed to give details about their adopted identity. I am such a perfect Superman that not even kryptonite can harm me, said one. I am Lady Gaga, except prettier. I am the reincarnation of John Lennon. The tour of the Cincinnati Art Museum included the most important highlights. A docent stopped in front of the Persian and Mesopotamian remains, Asian sculptures and ceramics, African objects, and European masters. When they were about to head back to the buses, Mr. Maximo noted a painting that spoke to him. He quickly read the name of the artist. This is an art piece by Arshil Gorky. He lived from 1904 to 1948. Give a look at it and tell me what you see. The newly named Superman exclaimed, I see confusion, and I'll fix it with my superpowers. To which Lady Gaga added, Oh, Superman, you're so shallow. That is the expression of a painter. You can't fix it. Imagine no hell below us, above us only sky, chanted the boy who had chosen to call himself John Lennon. Che Guevara muttered, I have no time for this. And Mandela found peace in the watery colors at his sight. And you, Professor Maximo, what do you see? asked the group of girls in the back in unison. Mr. Maximo felt tears rushing to his eyes. What I see, he sighed, is a gathering of my college peers back in Yerevan, my home city, when we had the most intense and lengthy discussions about life, identity, and belonging. He hadn't realized that the artist was originally Armenian as himself, nor that the title of the painting was Virginia Landscape from 1944. Once back in the bus, all the occupants, even though tired and half asleep, heard Mr. Maximo saying to himself clearly, today my students learn the meaning of perception and interpretation. Today they sense the significance of identity and belonging, the worth that lies in imagination and the existence of others. Each one of my students, including myself, saw at least one painting with their inner eye. They might not be aware of it yet, but I am. My job is done. In writing the story, Eva also came up with a few questions for us to think about when looking at this work of art and thinking about the story. Do you suspect a reason for Mr. Maximo bringing up the use of nicknames by some artists to hide or reinvent their identity? Here's why. Arshil Gorky's real name was Vazdanik Andoyan. He changed it as an homage 
to a Russian eminent writer who in turn had changed his name, Alexei Maximovich Peskov, to Maxim Gorky. Can you find other examples of famous people who adopted surnames, stage names, and or nicknames? Do you have a preferred nickname? What do you see in or on this painting by Cheryl Gorky? Do you relate to its title, Virginia Landscape? What title would be more suitable to you? Had you ever heard the name Gorky or about an art form named Abstract Expressionism? Does this painting raise your curiosity about this Armenian-born American painter, a prominent member of a style originated in the 40s in which several artists chose to depict their feelings through abstract forms and colors? Would you like to try to express your feelings using similar methods? I'd love to hear your thoughts below. Thanks and have a great day.